we should probably say right off the top that this isn't a guaranteed thing. There is still they're 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 in talks for for Michael Keaton to return. Some so speculation. Yeah, it's not necessarily a done deal at this point in time. Uh, but that's not going to hurt to. Uh, you know, us speculating on it and what we, you know, kind of would like to see out of it. And if he were to come back as Batman and Bruce Wayne, which that actually has been confirmed um, that if he does come back, he is going to be playing Bruce Wayne's Batman. And it's actually going to be a continuation of Batman 89 and that's crazy. Batman Returns. So they're going to essentially the plan is assuming the deal goes through is He's going to appear in Flashpoint as the exact Bruce Wayne Batman character from his original two movies, and they're going to disregard um, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. So, which most people kind of do anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> let's be real. Let's be honest. Most people kind of disregard them as it is, even though they're fun and they're in their campiness or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the puns from Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze is, is kind of enough reason to watch that movie. I liked uh, it as a kid a lot. I loved it as a kid, and I remember watching it like over and over and over as a kid. That's that's what that movie appealed to, you yeah. know. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like Batman Forever was its first step in like half dark, half campy, you know, because like the studio didn't like Batman Returns and how dark it was, and like they brought Joel Schumacher in, who rest in peace, by the way, everybody. He just passed away, so. And uh, not not a lot of people give enough credit to Joel Schumacher. Everyone just remembers him for. Uh, Batman and Robin and Batman Forever, but he did a ton of other movies. Uh, Back in the 90s? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't remember, like, off the top of my head what a bunch of the names were, but... Uh, I, I remember hearing that name floating around a bunch. I, I couldn't name any off the top of my head, but I'm sure if once I see him, it'd be like, oh. Yeah, like, he, I mean, he did a lot of stuff that people actually, I mean, that were actually, like, really good movies. Uh, it wasn't just... I mean, unfortunately, he was, like, known for... Um, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, but he did a uh, phone booth. He did. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, what else did he do here? He did. He did uh, number twenty three. Was listed on his filmography here as a director. Isn't that uh, uh, Jim Carrey? Number yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know, like Bad Company, A Time to Kill. I mean, Falling Down is probably one that uh, from nineteen ninety three, which like people love. Uh, people probably regard like a lot. More so than a lot of other of his films, um, and then uh, he did like Flatliners in the nineties, and then The Lost Boys. Like he did a lot of stuff. He really like, did. He didn't just do Batman and Robin, Batman Forever. And like honestly speaking, he did he did what the studio wanted him to do. Yeah, like they they didn't want Batman to be dark anymore. They well, wanted to appeal to kids. Let's, let's be honest too. I mean, even as goofy and campy as they were, to me at least, I. From what I understand, they were really popular, like in the box office. I mean, that. yeah, they were huge. They were very successful movies. I mean, I used it's to have kinda, all the toys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of like hindsight's twenty twenty, right? People look back on them now, and after after the Batman stuff we've had, like after the Batman Begins, you know, Dark Knight, and all that stuff. Yeah, those ones aren't really as cool and appealing, and they're not as maybe I don't know as well made to some degree. But even yeah. so, like. The movies were well made. They they oh, actually yeah. were well made movies. Yeah. Like they big were, budget. Yeah, they were ridiculous, but they were fun. Like there was it was more of like akin to the Adam West Batman and just kind of the antics that they would kind of have. Yeah. Um, but I mean that stuff aside, with Michael Keaton returning, potentially returning, there's there's I don't know, not so much hesitation, but uh, it's in, it's intriguing because I mean, like, like I said. They have confirmed he is going to be coming back as Bruce Wayne Batman. I don't know, like, for whatever reason, because it was, they're doing the Flashpoint movie, and that's where he's going to be making his quote-unquote first appearance. People were, for whatever reason, under the assumption that he would be playing Thomas Wayne, which wouldn't make any sense for, like, anybody. Like, it wouldn't make sense for them to go get Keaton to do that, considering he, he's I mean, Bruce he played Wayne. Bruce Wayne Batman. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to go get an older... Michael Keaton, there there would be no need to have him do a Thomas Rain, Wayne appearance because that would be more confusing. People always complain about confusing the general audience, and the general audience won't know. Like, you know, like they don't read the comics, so they won't understand this stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, confusing. I'm having, you know, someone play one role, and then all of a sudden they're playing a different role, and, and like, 
honestly, no one's no one's fucking stupid. Like everyone, <laughs> everyone gets it, you know, for the yeah. most part. Like, yeah, there could be some confusion, but most of the time, it's no different than when you got to switch an actor in a role. It's like jarring for five minutes, and then it's like, like whatever. and then and then your brain adjusts to it, and you're just you're you're like, okay, that guy's Dumbledore now, you know? Yeah, because you remember, you know, Dumbledore that that actor died, so they had to replace the Rhodey and like Iron Man. Yeah, and, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They even made a joke about the the Rhodey and, and when he came in for Iron Man two, when Don Cheadle replaced Terrence Howard. Yeah, his first scene, he's just like, yeah, it's me. Like, deal with it, you know? Like, he they made the joke. Yeah, it was like an under. You you'd have to know. That like that's what they were like making the joke of, but yeah, I mean you you would just immediately no one no one cares. They even they, even in sticking with the Marvel world in the MCU rather, they uh, replaced uh, one of the heroes three in Thor uh, after the first Thor movie. One of the heroes three, I think it's Bendril or whatever his name is, the bow and arrow guy, I believe. No, he wasn't a bow and arrow guy. He had, he had like a sword. He looked like a Frenchman with a sword. <laughs> but like they replaced him in the second one, and no one even batted an eye because Zach, Zach Zachary Levi ended up coming in and playing him in Thor two and then Ragnarok. But he don't his only scene in Ragnarok was in dying. But yeah, regardless, the concept still applies. Like it's not confusing. Like it's a bit jarring for like five seconds at at the worst. And like the only way anyone's gonna pay any attention to it is if the person they got to replace this other actor was just a terrible actor. Then like, then you're focusing on something else and you're not focusing on, Oh, it's whatever. But anyway, my question is though, like there's such a age difference at this point. Like Michael Keaton was young in those movies and you know, young and sprightly and everything. And now like not to be ageist or anything, but it just doesn't seem like it would line up well. And I don't know. Right. And that's the thing too. Um, a question. Let's let's get into the story here. So this this was from Screen Screen Rant, and this is the article that uh, seemingly confirms that he's going to be wearing the bat suit. So if anyone wants to go like look at this and read more into it, it doesn't say to this day. We still don't know the extent of it, and the the article itself even says like they don't know what the suit's going to be. They don't know to what extent he's going to be in the suit, etc. Like no one, no. There's still this isn't even a done deal, so there's still like very little news on it. All we know is that he is indeed going to be coming back to play Batman and Bruce Wayne Batman. And like we said, the, the very same Bruce Wayne from Batman 89 and Batman Return. So as far as the age thing goes, my whole thing with it, and I'd, I'd like to know what you think about this, Rick. If you're going to bring Keaton in to do... Uh, to, to maintain essentially his age and bring the Batman 89 stuff into continuity to the DCEU to some degree, because um, this taking place in Flashpoint would, it would connect the, the current DCEU to Batman, 80, Batman 89 and whatnot, to Keaton's Batman. So it would canonize it to the DCEU in some way. So DC, the DC is just going to end up going, you know, the multiverse route and just kind of yeah. have things kind of connect even though they're disconnected i mean i could go i could talk about that forever but because in the end with with that kind of stuff it's like at the end of flashpoint because a typical flashpoint story is you know the flash goes back saves his mom and then but like that flashpoint world that he goes into it has thomas wayne as batman and you know, aquaman the atlanteans and the amazons are at war with each other and interesting it's just Crazy, he's like Superman's pretty much, he's not dead, but he's pretty much dead. Yeah. And then he comes back in the end, but blah, blah, blah. Like, spoilers alert for if you don't know the Flashpoint story. But they've, they've said that this Flashpoint, Andy Muschietti has said that this Flashpoint is going to be very different from that iteration of Flashpoint, from, yeah. you know, the comics and even the animated movie that was based off the comic. But my thing is, though, if you're going to bring Keaton back to play Batman at his current age, I've always said, Rick, that there's one Batman movie that they, they should make, and it would work if done correctly, all right? And that is this right here. <laughs> Batman okay. Beyond? Yeah. Now, you run into the same issue with Batman Beyond as you kind of run into with, uh, kind of like with uh, Into the Spider-Verse, right? Yeah. There was no... The general audience, if we're going to, because 
the studios focus on the general audience and what's going to make sense to, you know, the, the biggest audience they can reach. That's what you want because yeah. I mean, that's how you make money. You know, no one's going to make a $200 million movie just for comic book fans, because unfortunately we are not going to give studio a billion dollars. Yeah. And I've always thought that Batman beyond would work and the way it would work best would be one of two ways. One, is you get Michael Keaton in because oh, that lends yeah. people like the general audience knows who Michael Keaton is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. They know if, if he were to come back and play that exact Bruce, which is what I always would, would have done. I would have just done. It would essentially be just an age jump. So the next he would installment have been perfect for that. Exactly. And the next installment of Batman returns would be a Batman beyond movie. And you pick up, if you've seen the way the Batman beyond shows actually like, kicks off the uh like the first episode in the world is set up with bruce is out uh, pretty much on his last mission as batman and he's off he knows deep down that he's getting he's getting too old for this shit yeah right? he knows like he's, literally yeah he's he, he knows he's danny glover he's like I, I can't do this anymore but he's out doing it because he's batman and so there, there has to be a batman yeah so the show pretty much opens with you see him in his last uh his last escapade as the Dark escapade, Knight. Yeah. And what ends up happening is he, he can't fend off the thugs like on his own due to his age, I mean, essentially. So he can't fend them off, and the only way he can like end the, the bout he has with these thugs is to pick up one of their guns. And he doesn't use it, but he has to, he has to point the gun at him. That's yeah, his, like force his way out. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the only way he could... like. End the bout with these you know, these had goons. To spook them. Yeah, yeah. He, he had to grab one of their guns and like hold him up. And he right when that happened, he knew he was done being Batman. He couldn't yeah. do it anymore. And then enter Terry McGinnis and him being the man in the chair for him. Uh, because how like old I said, was Batman and Batman Beyond? Like Bruce Wayne and Batman Beyond. If I remember correctly, he was somewhere around like looked like he was in the seventies like kind of thing. Oh yeah, like, he was definitely. He wasn't sixties, like he was like seventies, eight. He was old dude. Like, yeah, he was an old yeah. dude. And uh, but that's the thing when he he, he didn't like you. You find out later in other installments of like Justice League Unlimited that Terry is actually like Bruce's son. And uh, yeah, like him. see, I didn't watch a lot of Batman. Well, this doesn't happen until later, and there was a two-part episode of Justice League Unlimited where they brought uh, Terry in, and they it's, it was a Justice League show, obviously, so they did yeah. like a time travel thing, and they went uh, here, and then the final episode of the series, I think it was the final one, they actually do like a kind of a flash forward with Terry McGinnis, so he's like as old as Bruce was when he was like in his prime, so he's like in his 30s or something. Yeah. And it shows him like it's actually really good. I actually liked this stuff, but it it had him breaking into like Amanda Waller's house and like finding all these like documents and essentially proving that Amanda Waller and Bruce knew that the world needed a Batman, and they essentially they took Bruce's DNA and uh, inseminated Harry's mom oh. with his DNA, and like his whole life was set up to be batman that's crazy. so at the you you learn in the when you go back to the beginning of the batman beyond series like you don't know any of this stuff but he he faces a, a similar tragedy as bruce does because his, his father gets murdered yeah so he was set up and like it was actually like the phantasm that like, from batman master the phantasm yeah. who was initially hired to kill his his both of his parents like they were okay but she didn't want to do it like she ended up banging like, she, whatever but uh, but that's that's the thing. Like he was set up. He has a really cool story. When like they wouldn't get into any of that stuff in the first movie by, by any means. But yeah, it just like that kind of depth and everything. And some people didn't really like it, but I it worked for me. And it just brought like a the whole concept of Bruce knowing that there needs to be a Batman is really what made it work. And the way yeah. they sold it in the show was like he may be he might not be able to do it anymore. Like him, himself physically, but it doesn't mean that Batman has to die. Exactly, and that's why he was like ended up being cool with not so much being cool. He knew he needed to be the man in the chair for Terry and kind of live vicariously through him. 
because yeah. the world needs Batman. Yeah. Like that's the whole point. And like obviously with um Crazy. Yeah, and the suit for Batman Beyond is dope. Oh yeah. It's super dope. I've always thought that. Yeah, it looks great. And uh but yeah, going back to his to like the age of Michael Keaton, like you were kind of saying, like I would not buy someone with the age of Michael Keaton right now. I wouldn't buy him putting on a bat suit and no. like going and fighting people. Like Ben Affleck's Batman, for instance, he he was able to go toe to toe and beat Superman. Yeah, yeah. I I can't see someone in the age of Michael Keaton. Like being I, able to I do wouldn't it. buy that. No. Like they could do it. You you I mean you could do it. Michael Keaton's like, what? Like in his sixties now? Yeah. And I mean I mean that's the thing. If the my the theory I would have with this is one, they would potentially set up Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond. Yeah. Like they maybe not do it in this flashpoint thing, but they could definitely they could they could set it up to where that's what he's doing. Because they could even if he's gonna be in the suit they could have it be, you know, towards the end of, you know, his his run as Batman, and he knows it, and they could even kind of comment on that in the in the movie because it just depends on how big this role is. Yeah, which we obviously don't know. I was gonna say but, it could be like a cameo appearance for all yeah. we know. But. but that's the thing. I don't think it's gonna be for one. If it was just gonna be a quick cameo, like uh, for the fans, I think they would have kept this secret. They would have yeah. like kept it very hush hush. It would only take a day of filming and they could have him in there just yeah. you know, while Barry's running through time and just while he's in the speed force, just kind of show like a glimpse of him or he ends up in the bat cave and it's like Michael Keaton turns around on the chair. Yeah. And then yeah. like, that's it. And like, that's not something that I think people would be talking about to this degree, you know, no, like no. there's obviously like, these are uh, like good sources. Like this is the Hollywood reporter and variety and, you know, credible, outlets are reporting this so like someone someone in the studio or whoever gave this information up wanted it to be they wanted it to be new you know and that's the thing like if, if they want to keep something secret they typically can't so I, I would say like if they're gonna this this is probably gonna be a bigger role there were some rumors going around that they were looking at him to and this didn't really make too much sense to me but they were going to be looking at him to be a like a nick fury-esque kind of role Really? Which I don't, uh, I don't even understand how that would work. Yeah. And that's why, like, a lot of these rumors, you gotta just kind of, obviously. Well, it says he's wearing the bat suit. Like, yeah. And that's a confirmed story. Like, that, that one's, that one's legit. And, like, the, these rumors came out, obviously, like, there's, there's people, ru- speculation's fine. We're speculating right now about the Batman Beyond stuff. True, but obviously, true. once the news came out, people were speculating Batman Beyond for whatever reason. Like I said, it didn't make any sense. People were speculating he'd be Thomas Wayne. If you're going to have Thomas Wayne in, as far as continuity goes, you should just get uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan to come back and do it. Yeah. But yeah. we'll get into that later. Um, so, yeah, I would say that if it were me in, in the shoes of Warner Brothers, if I'm, if I'm a studio head, I'm not bringing Michael Keaton back an Academy Award level actor yeah. to do a small cameo. No, for sure. And I don't think that would happen. Exactly. And I'm definitely not going to be bringing him back to do a small cameo if they're talking like putting him in the suit again. Yeah. If they're talking, you know, these rumors about there being potential movies. Like, because they, they even mentioned that uh, they've been working on a Batgirl movie and they said that that would be potentially one of the ones he would pop up in again. Rumor mill. Well, now would That's this be coming from like the TV show for the Bat? girl movie or no this is a this is a totally this is, different it's a different thing yeah not, not the batwoman show the batwoman that's what i was yeah, thinking of. yeah. this one the, the batgirl show that or movie that they've been working on would be barbara gordon okay and uh so yeah like and that's just rumor but like if it were me like i said if i'm bringing michael keaton back to reprise his role as an older bruce wayne i know like he's he's too old to just be wearing the suit like and just like hang out with Henry Cavill. Oh yeah. Like no, so you gotta like just think like hey, I know it's speculation, but the Batman Beyond thing like I, I well it Ben Affleck's be Batman is already in that universe. Yeah, but they can uh, if it's like an alternate timeline or something. That's or... the thing. There's so much they can do with Flashpoint existing because they they could go the 
like crisis route and merge all these universes together into one. That's what ended up happening in, in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, that in the was... comics, they, they had all these, you know, the multiverse existed. So, like, you know, some, some heroes are there and here and blah, blah. And it got a little out of hand. It's a little so, confusing. Yeah, and what, it, exactly. And that's why they did Crisis on Infinite Earths, which merged them all into one. It was Earth Prime or whatever. Yeah. So, like, you could do some, like, funky stuff with that. And, like, with Ben Affleck not coming without as Batman, but he is the Batman in the, the world. You could use Flashpoint as a kind of crisis-y kind of event where it merges them into the same continuity to where you could have a Terry McGinnis Batman just be the Batman with, you know, Henry Cavill's Superman and Wonder Woman and stuff, yeah. if you want it. I think that would be a big mistake, personally, oh, because, yeah. that wouldn't... like, Batman Beyond has his own rich lore, and putting him into a different time is kind of you miss out on all the lore of Batman Beyond. Like, like he it's set in the future, and the whole point he has his own villains and everything, and you oh, miss yeah. out on all of that. So it would make more sense to me just to introduce Bruce uh, Keaton's Bruce, maybe set up Batman Beyond, and then these other films he's rumored to come back in as a Nick Fury kind of role. I could kind of see maybe someone at like. As like a mentor? Or like, yeah, because that, that's what yeah. Old Man Bruce in Batman Beyond is. Like, he is kind of like a Nick Fury kind of dude. But like, like you said, he's also living vicariously through Terry. Exactly. So, I mean, th that's what would make the most sense to me if you're going to bring Keaton back. It wouldn't make sense to have him be Batman with, you know, replace Ben Affleck. Like, that no. wouldn't make any sense. Like, the age is not right. I, it, there's no verisimilitude there. No one would be able to buy the fact that at least I would not be able to buy the fact that Michael Keaton is going to be going up toe to toe with Superman level threats. Like, yeah. I'm not buying Avengers that. level threat. Yeah. <laughs> like, the other thing, like, could you imagine go back to BVS and like Superman and Wonder Woman and Batman are fighting Doomsday and swap, swap Ben Affleck and his physical stature of Batman and his age with Michael Keaton? It's it not doesn't work. work. It, it, to me, it doesn't work. Now, I'd love to see him wear the suit again and, like, be his, like, last missions, like, setting up Batman Beyond. Yeah. I think that works perfect. Because, like, with the Batman Beyond thing, like I said, I think it could always work. And to get the general audience, like, involved with it, bringing someone like Keaton back, that gets everybody, like, hyped by itself. Yeah, they're like, you know? oh, my gosh, he's back. Yeah. And he's an Academy Award-level actor. Everyone knows, like, everyone saw Batman 89 and Batman Returns. So having Batman Beyond exist in that same continuity. It's just kismet. Like, it just makes sense. Yeah. And then you can start your own franchise with Batman Beyond after that. And introducing that world in Flashpoint is a perfect way to do it. Because, you know, depending on what they're doing with Flashpoint, it's just one of the, like, he just one of the random multiple Earths in the multiverse that Barry stops in is the Batman 89 world, which is now, by virtue of time, the Batman Beyond time frame. Yeah. Because then you can have him jump into another one where... The actual kind of Flashpoint story is going on with Thomas Wayne Batman. Like mm -hmm. the only thing that I do kind of have some hesitation with about the Flashpoint movie doing a lot of this stuff, um, especially if they were to do the Michael Keaton thing, like Batman Beyond stuff aside, bringing uh, Keaton in to do Batman in the Flashpoint thing. If they were to also include Thomas Wayne in like a, you know the same movie, mm -hmm. it almost becomes like a Batman movie. Yeah, you know, really. It's supposed to be like a Flash movie. And yeah, at like, that point, you're, like, making a completely other story. Yeah, and I mean, so I, I don't know. It's, just like, as much as I would love to see them kind of, like, mess around with all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does, at what point does it become, like, a fan service-y kind of movie if, if they're jumping through too many different time frames? Just, yeah. like, you gotta think, like, if there's an overarching plot, because um, in, like, Flashpoint, it's, like, Reverse Flash is, like, orchestrating all this stuff to, like, fuck with Barry. And yeah. at what point does that get put to the side if it's just like, well, we're going to go and we're going to introduce Michael Keaton's Batman and we're going to spend X amount of time doing that. Then we're going to go and do the real Flashpoint stuff. But then we got to set up the Thomas Wayne thing. So we got to set all that stuff up. So it's like, that's an hour's worth of content. And yeah. then you still haven't even, then you only got 30 minutes left to wrap it all up. And I don't know. It just, it seems like it could get really muddled depending on how they do it. And that's, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, I I personally, I'm excited to see him come back. 
I don't like I said. I'm kind of I'm kind of hesitant on the suit thing just because of his yeah. age. I could totally aside from them using the him just to like be the older Batman kind of thing. I could also see them de aging him a bit. That's what I was just about to right. mention. It's and, been a big thing in movies. Yeah, Lately. and I mean, especially if if he spends most of his time with the cowl on. It would be real easy to just CGI some wrinkles right out of his mouth. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you can't even, they wouldn't even have to spend time on his hair because he is bald now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It depends. Like, Has they, there ever been a bald Batman? I mean, aside from him just shaving his head, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think so. Not male, male pattern baldness Batman. Like, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think that has happened. Yeah. Like, oh. But yeah, there's a. I mean, there's 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 so much they could do with this. Like, I could probably spend like an entire episode talking about it and yeah. all the possibilities that it could it could bring. But if I had to guess in any way, I think the best thing to do, especially since, like I said before, with Spider Verse, they were able to uh, with Miles Morales, Sony was able to bring they they were able to get everybody in the general audience on board with another Spider Man who wasn't yeah. Peter Parker. And an animated movie and won, you know, an Academy Award and was arguably the, the best movie of the year. It's one of the best movies of the year, comic books aside. Yeah. And like, you got to think Warner Brothers is thinking the same kind of thing because, like, they're, it's not necessarily the same concept by any means, but it's very similar. You know, it's, it's a derivative character um, based on a very popular existing character. And I think. Kind of, it would kind of work in the same capacity with Spider Verse. Peter Parker is a very central character of that movie. He's in just as much of the movie as Miles Morales is. Yeah. And having Michael Keaton return as Bruce Wayne and do a Batman Beyond movie kind of works the exact same way. You have an existing Batman being a through line for this new Batman and Terry McGinnis. So that would work. Like, I feel like that would work more than anything because I. I'm finding a hard time wrapping my head around anything else they would be setting up with him coming back, in all honesty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, because him just coming back just to be a new Batman doesn't make much sense. I guess we'll just have to, like, wait and see. I mean, yeah, not to mention, too, the old man Bruce role, like that character in uh, Batman Beyond, it's a fun role. Like, he's a dick. Oh, yeah, like, I remember from Bruce watching it as a kid. A, he's an ass. And, like, I could see, like, Keaton being like intrigued by that. Oh right? yeah, yeah, like it's actually like if you actually watch the show and everything, like he is a very he's the kind of man like it's like a bitter old man. Exactly. It's like you know when like old dudes like you see it all the time where you just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> yes. And like they, they walk, they go to the gas station wearing their boxers and a bathrobe, no shirt, a cigar hanging out of their mouth. Like they're yeah. just they've done everything that they like. Not that they've given up. It's like, just they just don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, they're just like, they, they don't care. That's kind of how old man Bruce is. Like, imagine being an old man who knows, but you know that you're like the smartest dude in the world because you're Bruce Wayne yeah, and you're yeah. Batman. And now, like, you're angry because you can't be Batman. And, like, you know what I mean? And, like, that's kind of how he was. He was just like an old dude who just, he's seen everything. Yeah. Like, he's beaten gods. And, like, and now he's just old and feeble and he's just mad about being old and feeble. But, like, he still gets up every day and protects the damn city through the eyes of Terry McGinnis. Yeah. And like, yeah. I could see Keaton being interested in wanting to come back and be that Batman. Like, I don't yeah. see Keaton where he is now wanting to even come and who knows? I mean, money, uh, money talks. So like, it does, I mean, if he wanted, if they were like, well, we just want you to come back and just be Batman. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can see who, not a lot of people would turn down that role, but I don't know if Keaton is necessarily in a position to where he needs to come back to play Batman. I don't like, think he's really hurting for money by that's any what means. I'm saying. Like but, he he's doing like he's doing pretty good and he's yeah. doing really well and like without Batman over the years. So like if it were me and I was in his position, I'd have to feel like there has to be something enticing to it. Like what why would I come back just to play Batman again? You yeah. know, like there's gotta be more to it than just coming back and like especially even like the small cameo thing like why would why would keaton go throw you no he's not gonna do that like i don't see that happening like so i feel like it has to be something bigger and yeah i mean he's a pretty big name yeah maybe for not for people around nowadays but back like in the 90s he was in like everything you yeah. know including being batman 
So yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like if uh, actors like to act, like they don't want to just keep. Well, that's like a lot of these actors, like in MCU and everything. Like they don't want to just like Robert Iron Jr. doesn't want to just be Iron Man for the rest of his life. No, I mean it pays him well, and he has fun doing it. He he's basically morphed into Tony Stark at this point. Yeah, kind of like Johnny Depp, right? Like yeah. he's just well, that's the thing. Kind of by virtue of. Robert Downey Jr. didn't just become Tony Stark. Tony Stark was just Robert Downey. Oh yeah, like, no, it's like honesty, that's his real person. Yeah, that's just like... that's just what it is. It's yeah. just a perfect fit. Whereas like someone like Johnny Depp, kind of like over the years, you saw him just kind of ever since Jack Sparrow, he's, he's kind of slowly morph himself. Into... Yeah, he's just Jack Sparrow. But like the actors want to act, they want to have like a new and like exciting and challenging thing to do. They don't want to just come back and just. Like do the cameo as Batman just because it'll be fun for the fans. Like, no, I, no one wants to really do that. Like, you know, it's like I'm involved. And like, I could definitely see the Batman Beyond stuff, dude. Like, that's some primo content. And if done right, it could be really good. Like, one thing I was going to mention, too, not to get off subject or anything. It'll just be really quick. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, I heard God. they're making a new series that's completely different than like Jack Sparrow and all that. And Marco Robbie. I know. Yeah. Going, yeah. Let me see if I can pull it out. I just saw that uh, the other... I saw I that I saw in the news this morning, and I was like, that's interesting. Like, same yeah. universe, but not the same characters. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, that franchise... It's like a um, billion-dollar franchise. Well, it's a huge franchise, but, like, as far as the movies and their quality goes, downhill. Like, the, the first one... First one was good. I'll contend the first one was, like, a great movie. Like, it wasn't I kind of lost track after a while. The first one was just a, a super well-made movie. And that's yeah. the thing, too. It's like, when it first came out, like, I don't want to sit there talking, like, you're going to make a movie about a theme park ride. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, that's that's what we're doing right now, Disney. Really and, good. uh... But, yeah, it turned out to be really good. And, like, it wasn't just because of, uh... Like, Jack Sparrow's character or anything. Like, it was just a well-made movie. Yeah, like, it was just like, really good. Like I can tell, like that is a really good movie. But She's yeah, the, let's uh, see what the uh, director what from is. Birds of Prey or the producer or something. I think um, Kristen Hudson. Maybe I don't know. I don't. No, she wasn't for Birds of Prey. Oh, the writer. Maybe. She's the uh, writer for Birds of Prey. Yeah. It says down there. Yeah, I knew she had something to do with it. Actually, no. This is supposed to. This is supposedly uh like a separate from the reboot that's supposed to be happening. Oh, because at one point there was um. I believe Rhett Reese and Paul Warnick, the writers of uh, Deadpool. Uh, I think they were actually working on a the reboot at one point for this. Yeah, and uh, oh, this is kind of this would be interesting. Like, I don't know, like what uh, I don't know it, uh, when it comes to this stuff. I checked out of this after like the second or third movie. Yeah, but like, if it's starring Margot Robbie, I like Margot Robbie. Oh yeah, I, I love Margot Robbie. She's great. Me. You seen this? It would definitely put me more interested in it. Um, <laughs> just, I don't know. But yeah. It depends on what they're going to do with it. Like, like most things, it's like, not everything that you do is gold. I mean, no. like, I like Birds of Prey, for instance, but like, it, it. it wasn't that good. Like, no. It was, it was okay. But like, I love her as Harley Quinn. She's perfect as Harley Quinn. Yeah. So like, I mean, anything with more Rog Margot Robbie is always good. She is the perfect Harley Quinn. And she's absolutely perfect. So that's, I'm glad that she's uh, back in, uh, the Suicide Squad sequel yeah. too. So I'm glad they kept that continuity. If anything, like if you're gonna get rid of Ben Affleck as Batman, you're gonna get rid of Jared Leto's Joker. You keep what works. Yeah. You know, and Margot Robbie, despite how not well received Suicide Squad was, made a, made a ton of money though. Oh yeah. And it made like almost nine hundred million dollars. That's crazy. Um, the same with BVS. I mean, it made like nine hundred million dollars. It may not have been super well received, but it made a ton of money. Um, but you keep what works, and Marvel Robbie works. Yeah, so exactly. there's no reason not to do it. The only other thing I would have liked to have seen, which I don't know uh, what your thoughts are on this, uh, as far as the Batman Beyond movie goes, I because I've said for years that it could work, and bringing Michael Keaton back was a way to do it. Like yeah. that's just a, that's just a shoe in, right? But another thing I kind of not so much wish would have happened but it was the other thing that i thought would work and like if you waited like 10 years from now and then brought ben affleck back to be oh, the old man bruce yeah you know 
Because you could age somebody pretty easily. Yeah, they could put a little bit of makeup on them. You know, yeah. I think the problem with that just ended up being that Ben's not Batman anymore. No. And like, I feel like if he would have been able to do his uh, his movie that he was his Batman movie he was writing and going to direct and star in and stuff with Joe Maganiello and everything, which is another topic we'll get into here in a minute, uh, later in the show, not in a minute, but. If he would have been Batman for a little bit more and would have been a little bit more well received, because I think now, interestingly enough, kind of hindsight being twenty twenty, people like Ben Affleck as Batman. Yeah. There was a ton of backlash to it when he first got cast. I thought he was a great pick, especially when they released that first image. I don't know if you remember the first image they released with him like just standing there brooding next to the Batmobile. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, dude, when they released it, I'm just like. That's it, dude. That's yeah. fucking. That's, that's it, man. man. Like that's Batman right there. <laughs> like that's crazy. Like he's he looked like Batman. He was the first Batman that looked like Batman. I like his mm-hmm. voice too, as Batman. Yeah, what they did with his voice was a lot better than this. Yeah, like I, I don't get me wrong. The Dark Knight and like that whole trilogy is. He had a pretty intense the, voice in those movies, though. Yeah, it was like. It got kind of... It was like Bane, right? Like, ah, yes, hello! Bruce yeah. Wayne! Yeah. It's like, okay, I get you it. You have to cover your mouth when you do that. Too. Yeah, or uh, I found a cup works really well, too. Like a solo <laughs> cup. You just like, hello! <laughs> but, uh... They're fine. Like, I mean, I, th- th- those movies are great, right? But, like, it kind of kept with the same theme as the the Michael Keaton. And the Michael... The first four Batman movies, like, uh, sans, uh... Adam West, but those first four Batman movies, uh, 89 through Batman and Robin, none of those dudes looked like Batman. They were all no. wearing the black rubber suits, and they kept the same black rubber suit theme through the entire uh, Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. And then when Ben Affleck comes around, not only does he, the first dude that actually has the physical look of Batman in the comics, being, you know, like six foot four or whatever the hell Bulky, he is, yeah. huge brawler looking dude, like, a peak human specimen, like Batman has always been described of. Like, that's essentially what he looked like in that bat suit. Yeah. But they got the suit down to a T. Like, the gray with the black. I thought that with was... With the little ears that actually went the correct way. Yeah. Like, they went backwards. That's one thing that always bothered me about the, the Christian Bale suit. Is it all... They go The forward? ears go forward. And I was yeah. like... I always thought that was, like, super weird and an odd choice. Yeah, uh, it looked good, and like uh, the Christian dark, Bale's like Dark Knight suit looked amazing. The Dark Knight suit was great. Like, then the, honestly, the Batman Begins suit was great too. I really liked it. I like, like the way that they like explained right. it in that movie. I too. honestly, if if you're gonna just look at the general aesthetics of all, all the Bat suits, look great. Oh yeah, like yeah. all of them, especially for their times. Like Keaton's suit looked great, and then oh yeah, the updated one in Returns looked great. Val Kilmer's actually looked really cool. I thought. And then even even the, even the goofy ass ones in Batman and Robin, the bat the, nipples. Well, no, well, not the bat nipples alone, but even when they got the at the very end of the movie when they had the silver chrome like those they, are cool. I thought they that was actually cool. like they looked cool. Like, yeah, all the suits have looked cool, but the point being is like Ben Affleck's Batman like was the epitome of Batman, and not to mention yeah. he was really the first Batman that they had on screen that really really emphasized what Batman is and that Bruce Wayne is the mask and like Bruce Wayne died and like Batman Ben Affleck's born. Batman like they got that like he was Batman no or he was Bruce Wayne no more like they 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 nailed that and with everyone with all the other iterations like it wasn't really like that like they, they kind of tried with Christian Bale's a little bit to show that like it just seems like he was just like kind of acting the part yeah, like he act like a playboy, but he wasn't like he wasn't fully Batman in those movies. I mean, hell, he was like retired in The Dark Knight Rises. You know? What oh I mean? yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I don't want to go on a tangent about Dark Knight Rises by any means, but that that would have been the other way I would have uh, like liked to do it. I don't know if it would have necessarily been better than bringing Michael Keaton back as being Batman. And I think the only way you could have had Ben Affleck be old man Batman again. Is if he would have been Batman more, yeah. Like, but I don't know. And in the end, like I'm looking forward to what they're trying, whatever it is they're going to do with uh, Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. I'm on board. I'm intrigued. We'll just have to wait and see more. So I don't know. 
What about you? You good? You good with him coming back in general? Yeah, you know, I think it'll be cool. I always liked Keaton's Batman when I was a kid. I had all the toys, the action figures, and I like Michael Keaton as an actor. So uh, whatever they decide to do with him, I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah, I mean, he was great as Vulture. I mean, that was he was that was a more active kind of role. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Michael Keaton might be like in his like early fifties. No, I mean early sixties, late fifties. I mean, he's look it up real quick. I'll pull uh, Michael Keaton. Take a gander. It's 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 more or less so still just like the verisimilitude. He's sixty eight years old, dude. For sixty eight, I, I mean, mean, he looks great, but like, I mean, he's he's eight years older than Val Kilmer. Speaking of another, you know who else? You know who else? Speaking of Batman Returns, Danny DeVito is seventy five years old. That's insane. You watch like it's always sunny and that sort of stuff, and you're like, yeah, I would never guess. That. I would never guess that. Seventy five years old. He is seventy five years he's old. He's also really short. Oh yeah, I mean, he's, he's not the guy. But I mean, uh, dude. Speaking of Danny, this is completely off topic, but Danny DeVito, <laughs> dude, twins. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I fucking love that movie, dude. Yeah, yeah it's such a good movie. I, they, you know, they they were talking about making a sequel to that with Arnold. Yeah, I, I believe it would have been with Arnold and Danny coming back. Interesting. I would, dude. I, I'd be there for that. Okay. I'd also be there for a Jingle All the Way sequel, dude. Bring yeah. that back. Are they going to bring Jake Lloyd back, though? Ooh. Probably not. Yeah, he's kind of hit a rough patch in life. Yeah, but I, I'd probably stay away from that. Just redo it like a modern version of Jingle All the Way. Yeah, I mean, it could be the same kind of thing. I, yeah. Except just... it'd all be on, like, Amazon. <laughs> right, yeah. Either way. Let's uh let's let's move on here. So this guys, uh, what what do you guys think? Do you think uh, are you excited about Michael Keaton coming back? Do you think it's because do you think they're actually going to plan for Batman Beyond? Because that's what if I was in their shoes, like I just went on for for like a half an hour, I would I, I wouldn't bring him back. And I don't think if if I was in Keaton's shoes, I wouldn't want to come back just to do a role that I did thirty years ago, especially at the age of sixty eight years old. And there's got to be more meat to it. You know, in my opinion, like so, and I think him coming back as old man Bruce and launching Batman Beyond, there's a lot that Keaton could sink his, sink his teeth into with that. So that's where my headspace is kind of at with it. Whatever you guys think, though, if you're just excited to see him in the suit again, don't really care, just happy to have him back. Whatever it is, just let us know in the comment section below. Mm-hmm.